Okay, let's talk about the gross profit method of estimating inventory. That'll be questions 18 through 22 and 24, but I'm only going to do question 18, and you can do the rest of them on your own. Now, this gross profit method relies on the relationship between price, or sales, cost of goods sold, and gross profit. So net sales, and it's got to be net sales, minus cost of goods sold equals gross profit. This is the idea that you have to always understand and how these three pieces relate to each other. For example, net sales always equals 100%. If you're expressing this in terms of percentages, then net sales always equals 100%. And if you were given, for example, the gross profit percentage of 31%, then you should automatically know now that the cost of goods sold is going to be the difference in terms of percentage, so it would be 69%. That is the key to understanding this gross profit method. Remember, this is just an estimating method. It estimates what inventory is. It's very, but it's usually is very, very close. So, if you were given sales of twenty-eight nine or twenty thousand nine hundred dollars, then you could easily figure out the cost of goods sold in dollars because you know it, it's going to be twenty-eight nine times sixty-nine percent, or seventeen nine. Also. If you were given that sales were 28.9, and you could also figure out the gross profit in dollars. So 28.9 times 31% is going to give you 46.8 in terms of the, uh, and this C stands for computed, uh, 46.8 as an estimated gross profit in dollars. All right, so let's go on to question number 18. A company's warehouse was destroyed by a tornado on March the 15th. The following information was the only information that was salvaged. The beginning inventory, 28.9. Purchases for the period, 17.9. Sales for the period, 55.9. Sales returns for the period, $790. And the company's average gross profit ratio is 31%. What is the estimated cost of lost inventory? If you're given all these pieces, you can figure out the lost inventory, and which is really the same thing as the ending inventory, which should have been the ending inventory, but it was all burned up enough. It looks well not burned up. In this case, it was it was destroyed by a tornado. So, net sales minus cost of goods sold equals gross profit, and let's uh, put in the given amount of 100 percent, and then if uh, the gross profit ratio was 31 percent then now you automatically know that the cost of goods sold percentage is going to be, let's see here, uh, 69%. So <clears throat> let's do the following. Uh, we're looking for ending inventory or lost inventory. We're going to have to set up a separate cost of goods sold section, which relates to this right here. Okay. So uh, beginning inventory plus purchases equals something called goods available minus ending inventory, which is what we're looking for, equals the cost of goods sold. And let's plug in the pieces that we know. We know that the beginning inventory was 28.9. We knew purchases are going to be 17.9. And we know that uh, these two together will equal uh, goods available of uh, 46.8. We don't know ending inventory, and we don't know the cost of goods sold, but we can figure them out. So, we're looking for net sales. In order to make these pieces uh, fit together, we're looking for net sales. They gave us gross sales of 55.9. So we can take net sales and find that by taking the 55.9 of sales minus the sales returns of 790, and we'll get net sales of 55,000, <coughs> excuse me, $110. So, if we wanted to find the cost of goods sold, we could take the 55, 110 times the 69% cost of goods sold percentage, and our estimated cost of goods sold would be 3802590. We can plug that in over here, which we will. And so, the lost inventory, or the ending inventory that we should have had, should be the difference between 46.8 and 38.025, or it should be 87.74.10. That's number 18. Let's switch gears now to another topic, 
which basically is what should we include in inventory and this deals with question 23 so what we should include in inventory would be all goods that a company owns and holds for sale no matter where the goods are located when inventory is counted that's important no matter where they're located so there's certain things we have to uh, also uh, look at that require special attention which would be goods in transit goods on consignment and goods that are damaged or obsolete so um, when you sell goods to a customer and you send them to the customer FOB shipping point uh, whatever comes after the words FOB that determines when the title goes to the customer if it's FOB shipping point that means as soon as they leave your dock or as soon as they leave the shipping point they become the buyers so title passes to the buyer as shipment leaves the shipping point alright so these are not your goods any longer as soon as they get off your dock now FOB destination that is the word after words after FOB that means that when these goods are traveling they if it's FOB destination they don't become the customers property until or the title doesn't pass until they reach the dock of the customer so title passes to the buyer upon arrival at the destination so there's two kinds FOB shipping point and FOB destination and it determines when the goods uh, change hands or when title passes so let's see if we can solve this problem Pettis which, which is a company needs to determine its year-end inventory the warehouse contains 37,000 units of pieces of product so that's our first starting point for inventory of which 4,700 of these 37,000 pieces were damaged by a flood and cannot be sold so they should be subtracted from this 37, 47, excuse me, from this 37,000 another 3,700 units shipped FOB shipping point are in transit well we should know that if they're FOB shipping point that means the tran they, they changed hands as soon as they left our dock so they should not be included in the inventory that we're counting here and also the company also consigns goods uh, which means that they they put goods out in certain retailer comp retailers like they might have some goods at Walmart some, some goods at uh, CVS some goods at Walgreens and they're still their goods even though they're not on their location and they're not at their own site so if they're on consignment and they have 5700 units at a consignee's location then they should be included so we'll have to include those and then what else um, how many units should Pettis include in your inventory well it should be these three things and that adds up to 38,000 pieces or units uh, next we're going to switch gears again oh before we do that though I wanted to share a little personal information with you uh, I have a brother named Hal he recently got married here's a photo of uh, Hal and his bride leaving the church they also went on a honeymoon trip and their honeymoon uh, had uh, they had a couple of pictures from that and here's a, one of the pictures I wanted to share with you for their honeymoon trip uh, and they went on a hunting trip uh, let's take a look at the last question which is inventory turnover uh, this is another one of these ratios that tries to measure how well are you managing your inventory it's question number 25 the last one on the review so inventory turnover is measured by taking the cost of goods sold and dividing that by the average inventory and the average inventory is just calculated by taking the beginning inventory for an accounting period adding the ending inventory Add, two, add the two together and divide by two. Simple average. Now, this inventory turnover, higher is better. And so, uh, usually you want higher, you know, you want to compare from year to year, and hopefully you're getting a higher inventory turnover. You also want to compare it to whatever industry you're in. So, for example, if you're Coca Cola, you would compare your inventory turnover to Pepsi and so on and so forth. Now, uh, here's our last question. Use the following information for Razor Company to compute uh, inventory turnover for 2011. So our formula is the cost of goods sold, and that'll be for 2011, 389,700, 
and the uh, average inventory. Well, all we have is the ending inventory for 2011, but the uh, 2010 information gives you the ending inventory for 2010, which is really the same thing as the beginning inventory for 2011. So beginning inventory for 2011, for, excuse me, for 2010 plus the ending inventory for 2011, add them together, divide by two, and you get the average inventory. So once again, the cost of goods sold, 389,700. The uh, ending inventory for 2011 plus the beginning inventory for 2011, which is the same thing as the ending inventory for 2010. Add them together, divide by two, and you get uh, 39,700 divided by 79,740. And our turnover is 4.89 4, 4, 4 to 1 which means uh, that in order to make this uh, meaningful we'd have to look at what our past inventory turnover is and hopefully this is higher than the past because higher is better or we want to look at other kind of companies in our industry and see what maybe the industry average is and see if we're above that or below that.